Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS5 tutorial. So we finally have a method of being able to use remote play on our jailbroken PS5s now. Technically, this was possible already if you happen to have a PS5 that had been connected to a PSN account at some point in the past. That way it was properly officially activated and that way you would have access to the remote play settings, which you can find in the settings menu here. If we go down to system and go down to remote play, this would be accessible to you. However, for most of us, we've not had a console that's connected to PSN and is now on a jailbreakable firmware. So for us, we don't have access to this option. And that has been the main problem, even with offline activating your account on the PS5, even though we've had access to that for some time, it does not enable the remote play setting. So what we have now is that Idlesauce has figured out a way to actually bypass this so that we still don't have access to the remote play settings here, but it will enable it for you and then it will give you the pin code so that you can connect uh, a remote device. This only needs to happen once because once you have your device paired to the console you'll be able to connect to it at any point even when you're not running the jailbreak for instance. So this is really only a one-time thing and you'll be able to access remote play. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can actually get this set up here. So the first step that's required is to offline activate your account. Now if you know that you already have an offline activated account on your PS5 you can skip to the timestamp I'll put on screen here to get to the point of pairing your remote device. But if you haven't already offline activated your account, stick with me here so I can show you how to do that. So the first step here is to run the jailbreak. We're going to use the UMTX jailbreak rather than the IPv6 version um, because this seems to be the go-to exploit at the moment and it works from you know 1.xx up to 5.xx firmwares. So we're going to run the jailbreak here on our PS5. Okay, so when we run the jailbreak here, we'll get John Tornblum's Elf Loader running automatically with the UMTX jailbreak. If you are using the older IPv6 jailbreak, then you'll need to explicitly run John Tornblum's Elf Loader once you've loaded the jailbreak. So make sure you do that first of all. And then once we're here, there's a few things that we're going to want to run. We're going to want to run the FTP server so that we can install the offline activator. So we're going to select that first and run FTP server. And there it is running on port 2121. And then secondly, we also want to run the web server as well. So the homebrew loader, we're going to run that too and get that up and running. There we go. Okay, so for offline activating our account, we need to download the homebrew loader. So we're going to download the homebrew loader package. And we also want to download the offline account activator zip file and extract that out somewhere on your computer, like your desktop. So from here, we also want to grab ourselves an FTP client like FileZilla or use FTP from within Windows, whatever you prefer. So we're going to run our FTP client here, enter the IP address of our PS5 here in the host box. And then, of course, we're going to do 2121 as the port number and quick connect to connect us up here to our PS5's hard drive. Then we're going to go into the data folder on the hard drive and create a new directory in here called Homebrew if it doesn't already exist. And then go into that folder and we're going to copy our offline account activator in here. So extract your offline account activator zip file into a folder called off account off ACT. So we've got all of our offline account activator files in this folder here. And we're just going to copy that folder into the homebrew folder on the hard drive. And get that copied over there so it's all set up and ready. So that's all we need for the offline account activator. If you haven't already got the homebrew launcher installed, you'll also need to grab yourself a USB drive and copy the homebrew launcher package file here to the root of that USB drive, copy it over there, and then eject the drive and plug it in to your PS5. Okay, so back on the PS5 here, we're gonna exit out of the browser. We're gonna head over to our settings page here. We're gonna scroll down to debug settings, game, and of course, package installer, and we'll install the homebrew loader. And there it is. Okay, so from this point, we can go ahead and run the homebrew loader because we're running the web server uh, homebrew, which will allow us to access this. And now we can run our offline account activator. So we'll select that with X. We just give it some time here. Okay, so here we go. So once we get this popping up here, we can press circle to close dialog and we will now get our offline account activator. So what you're looking for is that your account is not activated if it has all zeros as the account ID, which user one here, as you can see, has all zeros. So what you want to do is select the account you want to activate with X and it will enter a random ID in here for you. 
you can just use that ID to activate the account and that will work. Although it will provide some limitations at the moment, which is that if you use a fake ID, a randomly generated ID like this, you'll only be able to connect third party remote play clients like Chaki, for example. You will not be able to necessarily connect using the official remote play applications or perhaps like a PS portal or anything like that. So if you actually want to be able to use all of the remote play apps, including the official ones, then you're best off using a real PSN account ID to activate your account here on the PS5. So with this account, I'll just go ahead and activate using this random ID here. But you can see my main account here actually does have my official PSN account ID entered. So how do you get your official account ID? Well, it's actually remarkably simple now to do. All we have to do here is if we switch back over to our computer for a few seconds, all we have to do is head to this website here, psnflipscreen.games, and enter your PSN username in this box. So just enter your PSN username, click submit, and it will grab your account ID for you. You just want to copy that account ID and paste it into a decimal to hexadecimal converter, like this one on rapidtables.com. The links for everything will be in the description. We click convert here, and we get our hex signed twos complement, 16 digit code. And you'll see that that is the account ID, the same account ID that I have activated my account with here on the PS5. That is how you get your official PSN account ID. So you'll be able to use the official remote play apps as well as the third party apps to connect with remote play to your jailbroken PS5. Okay, so once you've successfully activated your account, we can go ahead and close out of the homebrew launcher. And you're gonna want to reboot your PS5 if you've just activated your account for the first time here because not all of the activation is properly applied until you reboot. So just go ahead and restart your PS5 right now. Okay, and you'll know that your account has been successfully activated when you get to the sign-in screen here and you press the options button, you should get these options to log in as online, busy, or appear offline. That means your account has been successfully activated. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign back into my Modded Warfare account here. So all we need to do now again is go back onto the exploit here and run the jailbreak again to get John Tornblum's Elf Loader running. Okay, so we're on the home stretch now. So all we need to do is download the remote play get pin.elf file that we can use. This is going to enable remote play and give us our pin code so that we can connect a remote device. And then also we want a remote play client that we can use. So there's a couple of different ones. We've got uh, Chaki, which you can download for Android, Linux, Switch. Uh, Windows and Mac OS as well. Got support for all of those different uh, operating systems here. So, you know, I can just use the Windows x86 64 version. There's also a Chaki NG next generation. It's also handy for mobile devices like, you know, the Steam Deck, ROG Ally, those kind of things. You can also use this for that as well. Another free option. And then, of course, there is also the official remote play app from Sony themselves, from PlayStation. So we can also give that one a try too. I'll start off using Chaki, I guess, first of all. This is kind of a common one that people use. So we'll go ahead and open this up. You can see it's already detecting my console on the network because I have it connected directly to Wi-Fi. This is another important thing. In order to avoid network issues, I highly recommend you connect your PS5 directly to your router, whether that be through Wi-Fi or a Ethernet cable. Just make sure it's not connecting through another device. There's not like a middleman device like going through like your computer's internet connection, for example, that's sharing to the PS5, which is my normal connection setup, which will work if I enter the IP manually, but it can cause problems with the official remote play clients because they don't allow you to enter an IP address. They just search on your network and if it doesn't find it, it will just say it can't find the PS5. So to avoid those issues, it's better to connect your PS5 directly to your router. So if it was not showing up here, we could just click the plus button and enter the IP address of the PS5 manually and save it. Uh, but in this case, it's found it here on the network, so we can double click. And then we're gonna select PS5, of course, and then we need to enter our account ID and our pin code. So this is where we're going to inject this payload here. So we're gonna open up Netcat GUI or some other payload injector, enter the IP address of your PS5 in the host box, port number 9021 for John Tornblum's self loader. We're going to drag in our payload here, get pin code, and we're going to inject this payload onto our PS5. And you will see that we get this notification popping up, pin code along with account ID. So this is what we want right here. I'm just going to screenshot this on my 
computer so that this is easier to see here. So you can see here if I just grab my image editor. So this is the message that keeps popping up. We see we only have a short amount of time to get connected here. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay, so first we have to enter our account ID and then the pin code, which is 56063865. Let's go and try that. Register. And there we go. Successfully registered. Awesome. Let's double click this and we should have remote play up and running. And we do. Look at that. It's working. We've got the crackling audio issue though. As you can hear, that's pretty bad. Uh, that can be fixed in a number of different ways. Uh, one way is to just, you can increase the audio buffer. I've heard if you set it to 19200, that can actually fix it for some people. Let's hear now. Okay, so that is a bit better, but I'm still hearing audio crackling. So the other fix supposedly is, and this works best for me for some reason, with this application is we go into the audio settings here and we get rid of this Windows DLL file. Uh, although it would help if I actually close the application so it's not using it right now. So we delete that and then we can run the remote play client again. And then if we go into the settings, we set the audio, audio buffer to 4000. And for whatever reason, this seems to correct the, the issue for me. There we go. So as you can hear, no more crackling audio. So anyway, that fixes the issue there. Let's go ahead and give a different client a try. We can use the official remote play app here from Sony themselves. So with the official remote play clients, we have to sign into our PSN account. This is why it's important to use a real PSN account ID when activating in order to use these official remote play clients because it needs to match the ID of the account you sign into here with the one on your PS5. Otherwise, it will refuse the connection. So we're going to sign into PSN here and we'll just log in with our normal account. Okay, so here we go. So we can select our PS5 before connecting to PS5, blah, blah, blah. Make sure remote play is enabled. Can't find your PS5, pair manually. Okay, so all we got to do is do the same thing again. So if we switch back over to our console, you can see that we're not running the payload anymore. So I'm just going to inject the payload again so we can get our new pin code. So there it is. So 1724-2684, let's go ahead and pair and hopefully, yep, there we go. It's weird how it says pairing failed and yet it still works. Not sure what's up with that, but as you can see, we now have access to remote play here on our PS5. It's all up and running. Okay, so that's how you get the official remote play apps working. That's also how you get the third party apps working. So fake ID, you'll have to use a third party client. And if you use a real PSN account ID, you'll be able to use all the official clients and the third party clients, including things like the PS portal. Now we also have Chaki NG, which is next generation. It's basically the same as the regular Chaki application, except it's designed for handhelds, like the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally, if you want to access remote play on those devices. So you can see we still have our console registered from the previous application. So this one is another good one that we can use. It also has the option to pair a PSN account to get your PSN token. This is for being able to access remote play online over the internet. So this has not worked for me so far. You can give it a try if you want. You go into the settings, you head over to the config settings and you sign into your PSN account. And then of course that gets you the token and it should add your console there. For some reason for me, it shows up as a PS4. Maybe there's an issue there, or it could be because my primary console on my account is actually perhaps set to a PS4, and that's why it adds the PS4 instead of connecting to the PS5. So there seems to be some issue there. It might be possible to get this to work on a jailbroken PS5 to connect over the internet. It would be a lot easier, but for me anyway, I haven't been able to get this working so far. I could be missing something though, so that could possibly work. The other, the other option, there is also an option without connecting to PSN to be able to access remote play over the internet. I did cover it in a previous video on setting up remote play for the PS4. So I'll leave a link to that video down in the description with the timestamp of where that part occurs, which shows you how to port forward on your router for remote play, as well as setting up a dynamic DNS so that you'll be able to access remote play over the internet without having to sign into PSN, meaning it will also work with a fake account ID as well. 
So yeah, check out that video. It'll be linked down in the description. But anyway, big thanks to, of course, Idlesauce for figuring this out and getting remote play working on consoles that were not previously connected to any PSN account and did not have access to remote play. Now we can all enjoy access to remote play. This appears to work on most firmwares. I've tested on 4.03, of course, uh, but it's also been reported to work on 3.20 and 5.10 and theoretically should work on the other jailbreakable firmwares too. But if you do have problems with the payload not working, let Idlesauce know and hopefully we can get it ported to any firmwares that are currently not working. So yeah, anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.